hello everyone welcome to my channel my name is Juliet if this is your first time here thank you so much for stopping by please consider subscribing for my returning subscribers thank you for always clicking on my videos in today's video I will be showing you how I recreated this lovely baby girl dress for a five-year-old girl so first I have my lining here it's folded into two so I'm using the chest measurement of the girl which is 24 inches so 24 divided by 4, that is 6 plus extra 2 inches for allowance and then another 1.5 for zip. So all in all I have about 10 inches of fold. And then the half length which is 11 inches, I added 1 inch to it making 12 inches. So I have 12 inches of fabric here by 10 inches on fold. So here I am marking the zip allowance because this is the back piece. I am marking the zip allowance which is 1.5 inches. I'm going to mark that all the way down as you can see and then using my ruler I will connect that together so for the front piece again we will be using the chest measurement which is 24 inches divided by 4 which is 6 plus extra 2 inches which should be 8 we don't have more than that here but I'll trim off later and then for the half length is still the same thing 11 plus extra 1 making it 12 inches so I'm placing it on top of that zip line exactly on the zip line so from that zip line now I'm marking the shoulder measurement five and a half inches so the shoulder is 10 divided by 2 that is 5 plus another 5 inches making it five and a half so I marked the armhole six inches and then I'm marking the same shoulder measurement down here so I get a straight line next I'm marking two and a half 3 inches rather for the neck width and then 3 inches for the neck depth. But you can use 2.5 if you want it exactly like it is on the thumbnail. I use 3 by 3 for the front neckline. So I've curved the neck. Next I'm marking 2.5 inches from the midpoint and then half inch on the armhole side. I'm going to slant that for the shoulder slope. So next I went ahead to curve the armhole. And then I am marking the yoke now. So the yoke I marked four and a half inches. So notice how I placed my tape from the very beginning. I marked four and a half inches down. And then I'm marking it all across. So the yoke is straight. So I'm just going to mark four and a half inches across the front piece like so. And then I'm connecting with my ruler. Next on this down part, I went in by half inch, which is very optional, but I like to do it anyway. Then I marked the chest measurement, which is five and a half inches. That's chest length from the shoulder to the chest. And then I slant to the half inch point like so. I'm going to be cutting that out. And then I'm cutting out the front neckline. I'm cutting only the front piece, the upper piece. You will see that in a minute. And then the shoulder slant as well. So after cutting the armhole, we're going to cut the yoke part now. I'm going to just cut it out straight as you can see. So that is it for the front. Now we're going to mark the neckline for the front piece. So it's going to start from that zip line. So I'm placing 3 inches from that zip line and then I'm marking the neck of 3 inches wide. And then the depth we're going to use that yoke length which is 4 and a half inches from the shoulder. So I just drew the same um, 4 and a half inches line like I did on the front. And then I'm curving to the neck width which is going to be the back neckline and then this part here is going to serve as the yoke for the back so I just place the front piece on the back piece to be sure that the yoke is exactly the same they are both sitting on the same point which is four and a half inches from the shoulder so I'm going to connect this now 
and then cut out the back yoke like so and then the neckline so this is the yoke for the back the part that has the deeper curve is the neckline and then the other is the armhole and then this is the front piece and then the front yoke so I've gone ahead to cut the yoke on a net fabric and I will explain to you in a minute this is the yoke piece so I placed it on another fabric on fold a net fabric on fold like so I, I traced up the same thing on the sides and then I added half inch on this down part half extra inch on the lower part the neckline and the armhole side are the same and I cut out two so one is going to serve as the lining because I didn't want to use bias for the neckline so I used the same net fabric to turn the neckline I did the same thing for the back yoke here for the belt I have 23 inches of fabric and then 5 inches long so 20 3 by length, 5 inches by width. So I'm folding it like so. I'm going to go so and then close one end using half inch. That will be for the belt. And then I went ahead to cut the main fabric using the lining. I cut out the same thing. No extra allowance. It's not necessary. So here's the yoke now. I'm going to go turn it. So I'm placing the two right sides together. I'm going to go so on the neckline using about half inch and then the armhole side as well we're going to do the same thing for the back yoke we're going to place the two pieces together right sides together and then i'll go sew the neckline and then the armhole we're going to be doing the same thing for the other back piece So after sewing, this is the belt. I've turned it to the right side. This is what the two of them are looking for. Uh, I'm lo are looking like. So I'm going to iron those in a minute. And this is the yoke. So I'll be notching the neckline, just small cuts, but not past the seam line. I'll be notching the armhole side as well. So I'll turn it to the right side now, as you can see, and then iron both of them flat. The same for the back yoke. Please give this video a like if you're still watching. That will help uh, YouTube show it to more people. Thank you so much. So after ironing the yoke now, this is what the three of them are looking like. So this is the front piece. I'm going to place the front yoke on the front piece. So already the middle has a crease. So I just make sure the midpoints are matching. And then I'll place the lining over it like so. And then I'll go so using half inch and then I'll sew the armhole side as well so it's going to have extra half inch on both edges for the back piece as well I'm going to place the yoke so the part that has the deeper curve like I said is the neckline so this other part that is on the armhole now I'm going to place it such that I'll have five half inch hanging on the armhole side like so so placing the lining on top of it now i'm going to go close there then sew the zip side and also the armhole side so the same for this other back piece i'm placing the right side of the yoke piece on the right side of the main fabric leaving half inch on the armhole side then placing the lining on top of it i will go so like so the armhole and then the zip side so after sewing all of the pieces, I have ironed them and this is what they are all looking like so far. Next, I'm going to go sew the back pieces together using one inch. So after turning it with the lining, our zip allowance is now one inch left and that is what I'm marking here. I'll take it to the machine now and sew using a loose stitch. After which I will iron and this is what we have. So next, I'm marking the measurements. So I'm marking... 24 divided by 4 which is 6 and also the measurements are starting from the zip line 
6 inches is sitting on that zip line and then I marked the same thing 6 which is quarter of the chest measurement and then quarter of the waist waist measurement so using my ruler now I've connected both next I'm going to check again to be sure that I have half of the measurement I'm working with from one line to the other which is 12 and then on the right side I am marking half inch up from the lower part like so that is where the belt is going to sit before we sew so I'm going to pin the belt on that line It's going to sit like so I left about half inch from the edge I'm going to pin the belt in place first before we continue so like i was saying if you're yet to like the video please this is the time to do so please please click on the subscribe button so that youtube can show this video to more people thank you and also if you have not subscribed people this is the time to subscribe well, click on the subscribe button down below so after pinning the belt in place i'm placing the right um the front piece now on top of the back piece right sides together and i will make sure that the midpoint of the front piece is sitting on the midpoint of the back piece so i'm pinning that in place then i'll go ahead after that i will arrange the sides making sure that they are both sitting on the same level and then I will pin them together all the way down the same for this other side make sure the armhole is aligned and then I will Take it to the machine and sew on the lines like that. So after sewing, I've also gone ahead to trim the seam allowances, leaving only about one and a half inches. Next, I'm going to join the shoulders. So what I'm doing here is to fold in the raw edges and then put one, um, one of the shoulders into another folding in the raw edges as well and then i'll take it to the machine to top stitch you can just sew your shoulders normally and just weave them or use a french uh, seam which will be a lot easier here i just pin the edges one edge of the shoulder like so and then i pin the other edge of the shoulder too so that is the two I'm pinning the shoulder too. I'm leaving the lining piece of the yoke out of my pinning. So after that, I now pushed it in and then I folded over the lining piece of the yoke like so. And then I will go and stitch on it. And that is it for the shoulder. After that, it's time to work on the lower skirt. So I'm going to open this up now. I keep it aside yet then I have my fabric this is three yards of Ankara fabric I folded it as many times as possible and then I'm going to be cutting the lower skirt so I'm placing the half length which is 11 inches at the edge of this fabric now and then I'm going to measure the full length of the dress plus extra two inches and then I'll mark that out And that is it for the lower skirt. I'm going to be cutting that out now. So if you have only three yards of fabric to work with, you will have to like cut this out first and then use the remaining piece to cut the upper part of the dress. So now that I've cut it out, this is what I have. So I'm going to cut a lining piece that will be at least three inches shorter than the Ankara piece, like so. I'm going to take these two pieces now to my machine to go and hem the lower part. After that, I folded it into two here, 
I'm going to notch the midpoint and then I'm folding again and I will also notch this other point like so. So I'm doing the same thing for the lining pieces. The lining piece. <laughs> I'm going to notch the midpoint, folding it to two. Then I will fold again and notch this other corner like so. Here is the upper piece now. I'm going to place that midpoint that I notched on the midpoint of the upper piece like so. Using my pin, I'm going to pin that in place. And then I will locate the next notch and place it on the side seam. I used my pin to pin that as well. And then I'm pinning the edge at the edge, leaving about half inch hanging. We'll use that to turn the lining later. So on this other side again, I'm going to place the notch on the side seam. Pin it in place. And then pin the remaining, the other edge of the fabric to this other end, leaving half inch hanging as well. So after pinning here, I am going to pin to where the zip line is, the zip allowance, that's the one inch. And then from there, I'll start making my pleat. So what I do is I use my pins to make the pleat all around before sewing. And then when I get to this other end as well, I'm going to pin all to the zip line and then make sure my pleats fall in between those places. So now that I have pinned all, now that I've made the pleats and I've sewn in place, this is what the dress is looking like so far. Now it's time to go sew the lining. So see how I folded it? The lining is now going to sit on it like so. So the right side of the lining will be facing the right side of the main fabric like so and then the middle notch is sitting on the middle on the midpoint and then i'm going to pin the other notch to the side seam i'm basically repeating the same thing i did for the main fabric also the edge here too will leave about half inch hanging exactly like we did the main fabric after pinning all these pieces in place We're going to be repeating the same thing we did for the main fabric. So I will pin it up to the zip line, pin past the zip line, that's the one inch, and then I will make pleats from there. Now the lining is now up to three yards, the width is not as much as the main fabric. So I'll just go make this pleats like that. After that, I will now close this side. Sew it down, that half inch I left hanging 